in my opinion, the one change that would have the biggest impact on society is for people to have an awareness and an ability to live their life on having healthy, rational beliefs and attitudes. Um, and what I mean by that is stems from the philosophy of rational emotive behavior therapy, um, a branch of uh, psychotherapy that was uh, developed by um, a man called Albert Ellis, who uh, formulated his theory and his model of psychological health uh, from stoic philosophers and observation of humanity and what people presented in, 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 in therapy with. Basically, he said that um, we have um, a, a, an ability to transform our desires, what we want, and how we would like things to be into dogmatic demands. And when we transform our desires and our wishes into musts and have-tos, um, which are based on rigid demands and thinking, then we become d disturbed. And disturbance is basically classified as um, having some form of a, a neurosis, where, for example, uh, anxiety is 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 a is a neurotic um, emotion. So is depression, rage, guilt. So and and those emotional states are provoked by rigid thinking and rigidity in judgment and and, and assumptions. Not only do those beliefs, well, this is what we call beliefs, so not only do rigid beliefs trigger and provoke unhealthy emotional states in people, but they also influence their thinking process and they all also influence the actions and the behaviors that they display. So by having an awareness of how to transform our rigid dogmatic thinking into wishes and desires um, and, 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 and having the ability to question ourselves and to be aware that we are vulnerable to disturbing ourselves and but we also have the capacity to undisturb ourselves is the one thing in my opinion would have a huge impact on society. We can see for various examples of rigid thinking in society. We see it, um, you know, if, if somebody holds a, uh, take any concept, such as the concept of failure, for example. If you hold, if your desire is to succeed and to achieve, but you transform that desire into a have to, so I have to succeed, I must not fail, or else. And the or else could be, you know, as, as self-judgment, so I have to succeed or else it proves I'm a total failure of a human being. Holding such a viewpoint and attitude about anything that you set your mind to achieve will, um, will, will, will trigger you to be in a state of anxiety when you are working on that project and probably trigger you into depression if you fail. Now, if you are in a state of anxiety, all your decision and thinking powers will come from that state of anxiety. And so it's not going to be the best mental state to be in to make decisions. And that's in, in, in one area. Albert Ellis um, uh, noticed um, and, and, and talked about three particular areas that he saw um, that human beings commonly disturb themselves about. Um, he said the first area was when people uh, demand uh, the fulfillment of their expectations and, and desires. So it's, it's, it's a need to achieve what they would like to achieve and having approval from others. So the first, you know, unhealthy sort of um, areas that people come into therapy, what we see into therapy, obviously is a disturbance about non-achievement of goals and disapproval from others. And he put it in the, in, in, in the form of that they have a need to do that. When you have a need to do that, that's one particular area of disturbance. The second one, he saw that what people hold rigid beliefs about other people and how other people should or shouldn't behave. So you, you have to do as I think is right. So 
and that's another area of disturbance which provokes a lot of anger, frustration and judgment of others. And the third area that he talked about was a need for life to be um, easy and comfortable. So the idea of effort becomes intolerable to the, to, to the person and it becomes, they, they, they hold what we call low frustration tolerance. They, and so area, you know, issues about procrastination, issues about uh, giving up too easily because you, you know, it has to, negotiations have to be easy, they have to be comfortable. So another area that you talked about was about life having to be easy and comfortable. Now when you think about all of these three areas, you can see the world, most things fit into those three categories. Um, and you can see our, even our great leaders operate in, an, in, 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 in irrational ways where you see them at conferences, uh, not managing to come up with constructive solutions and agreements. So one of the things that we disturb ourselves about is that when you hold an irrational belief, that becomes the filter of your judgment. So everything that you think about gets bounced or filtered through that judgment of yours. So if you think that um, people have to agree with me or that they mustn't think in that way uh, and if they do then they are bad and worthless then as soon as you sit down to negotiate with that person whether it is in one-to-one -one therapy with couples counseling or whether it's uh, in, in, in a community or whether it's in a company at a board of directors or whether it's you know, uh, government leaders, um, where they're trying to forge a treaty, you can see that holding views, rigid dogmatic views like that, will sabotage communication because you won't be able to hear what the other person is saying and you're not going to be able to listen to their point of view. So we all have the right to uh, pursue our desires and, 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 and the things that we want to, we, we want to achieve. But as soon as we transform those desires and wishes into dogmatic demands, then that's when we find it um, uh, uh, an obstacle to the achievement of, 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 of such demands. So it's important that you know, we have the ability and an awareness to understand where our decisions are coming from and are they influenced by the emotional state that we're in. And for us to be able to understand that the emotional state that, that we're in can be healthy or unhealthy. And at the heart of unhealthy emotional states are dogmatic demands and judgments. Global rating of one another. You know, you're bad because you're not fulfilling a certain condition that I deem to be to be right. So if I'm going to sit down and judge you, as soon as you sit, you know, you 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 explain your position, everything that you say is going to be filtering through my mind based on that global rating of you. So I'm not going to be able to hear you very well or listen to your point of view because you you've already failed in my eyes. And and so it's it's really the concept of you have to fulfill a certain condition before I value you as a worthwhile human being. And what, what I'm saying here is you can judge somebody's opinion, you can judge somebody's behavior, you can judge somebody's performance, their attitude, but keep it at that. Don't then jump and judge that human being for holding that viewpoint. And the reason for that is not soft psychology, is that so that you can actually have a solution to the conflict that, that, that you're having with another person or with another government or in society. If you look at you know, what the, the attitudes of people who riot, in, they, 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 they see in society that there is unfairness and they're demanding that life has to be fair. And we know that, you know, it would be preferable if life was fair. But from observation, we can see that life isn't always fair or easy. But if you hold a demand that it has to be fair, coupled with a demand that life has to be easy or else, then you can understand how somebody is going to be then behaving outside of the law, turn into criminality and behave in, in, in against society. So it's not because they're bad people, it's because their viewpoints and their attitudes are unhealthy and irrational. And you transform that into you know, uh, 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 in, into boardrooms in, 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 in corporate companies, into government, 
where, you know, and the same philosophy applies. So that's what I say is, is the one thing that I think will have a great impact on people, people becoming more um, psychologically and philosophically aware as to what makes a healthy mind and what drives healthy behavior and an ability to listen to an opposing point of view without you know turning it into the end of the world um, by and and and, and the, the the philosophy that i advocate stems from rational emotive behavior therapy um, developed by um, uh, uh, um, a great mind thinker albert ellis